This is one of four videos on thinking procedurally. In this video, we discuss how to determine the steps required to solve a problem. An important part of thinking procedurally is being able to work out the order of the steps you need to take in order to solve any given problem. So you might be asking yourself, is the order of steps to all problems even relevant? Well, many of the programs we use are what's called event driven, at least in part, which means they only take action in response to an event, such as clicking a button, selecting an option from drop down menu or typing on a keyboard. However, the order in which the steps are going to be taken by the user is largely unpredictable. Consider a modern word processor or spreadsheet program. As a developer, you cannot predict which buttons, menus or specific functions are going to be used or in what order. That means the various modules that make up the software are coded in such a way that they can be accessed by the user in any order they like. On the other hand, some problems involve a very predictable sequence of steps. Consider a program for booking cinema tickets online. Certain actions must be taken by the user before they can proceed to the next part. For example, they shouldn't be able to pay for tickets until they've chosen their seats. They shouldn't be able to choose their seats until they've selected a film. With this sort of problem, there's a clear progression in the required steps. As preparation for the exam, try thinking about a variety of scenarios and ask yourself the question, is the order of steps required to solve this problem important or not? You could consider various real life scenarios, such as constructing a house, buying a meal in a restaurant or online grocery shopping. Although these are real everyday examples, you can apply the same computational logic to problems you'll encounter in the exam. So a quick note from the exam board, the OCR clarification document states, candidates must be able to identify the steps that will need to take place to complete the algorithm or program and be able to write these in a suitable format or put a given list into the correct order to produce a working program. Candidates may need to write pseudocode or draw a flow chart to show this sequencing of steps. So let's have a look at a little example. Here we've got create a flow chart or pseudocode for an algorithm that calculates how much carbon to dose into a fish tank to maintain safe nitrate levels. The following rule should apply. And you've been given various rules here. For example, start by entering a nitrate level from one to 50, and then depending on what the nitrate level is, will depend on the dose of carbon. And there's various threshold and ranges there. You'd then be required to think carefully about the scenario, the rules you've been given, and show the steps required to solve the problem. Here's the solution in a flowchart. But it'd be just as valid to show the same order and sequence of steps as pseudocode as shown here. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. Why is it important to work out the steps required to solve a problem? And is it always possible? And what are some of the techniques you could use to lay out these required steps? To help get your head around everything to do with computational thinking, we have a freely available downloadable cheat sheet. It's got two sides to it. There's a basic poster that reminds you at a top level what the five different strands are. And on the back, there's a much more detailed explanation. This resource is completely free from student.craigandave.org. Just scroll down and select the section that says A-Level Revision. 
you will then see a section called OCR, AS and A-Level and there's a number of cheat sheets in there including two versions of the computational one. Just click download to get the zip file.